Thank you for tuning into Literary Blend, a publishing podcast. I'm your host, Demi Michelle Schwartz. There's no perfect recipe for chasing a dream in the publishing industry, but I hope the conversations on this show give you the ingredients you need to bake yours into reality. So let's flip the page and get into this chapter of Literary Blend. Hello, friends. Welcome back to Literary Blend. Today's chapter is called Healing Through Writing, and joining me on the show to cover this very important and relatable topic is Heather Kays. Hi, Heather. Hi, thank you so much for having me. It's fantastic having you on the show. How are you doing today? Doing very well, thank you. I actually just wrapped up a meeting with a literary writing uh, like feedback and accountability group that I'm in online, so I'm all ready to go and talk about literature with you. Absolutely. Well, I'm so excited for this conversation. I'm very excited to talk about healing through writing with you. But before we dive into that, I would love for you to share a little about yourself and your journey in publishing so far. Sure. So I started writing when I was seven years old. Um, I started doing creative writing, poetry, short stories as a way to help me cope with the trauma, neglect, and abuse that I went through at home. Um, As I grew up, I became a professional writer at the age of 18. I was a journalist for about a decade. Currently, I do marketing, writing, and editing. Um, And I have a book that is completed called Pieces of Us. It's a memoir slash family saga. It's about my mother's life and her struggles with alcoholism and addiction. Um, It's about trauma and healing and self-discovery and trying to figure out who you are when you grow up without the kind of support system that you would hope for. Um, I have a second book that I'm in the process of writing called Lila's Letters. That is a young adult coming of age story. And the main character, the protagonist in the book, Lila, writes letters to herself as a form of healing. Um, She never sends the letters, but it's a way for her to, it, it, it's cathartic and it helps her figure out why she feels the way that she does and how she can move forward and heal from those things. I love that so much. Well, first on the memoir, that's a very vulnerable project for you. What was it like to write that project and bring up all those emotions? It was extremely difficult. It's the hardest thing I've ever written. Um, and that's saying something for a person who's been writing for over 20 years professionally. It's really difficult to tap into those feelings and not have it weigh you down. I had attempted to write this book many, many times over the course of years unsuccessfully. I needed to go through therapy and really grow and learn and heal in a lot of ways until I got to a point where I was mentally healthy enough to be able to tell these stories. Thank you so much for opening up about that. And I'm super excited for your YA project as well. And the fact that your protagonist writes letters to herself, that's so common, I feel like, you know, just in any way of writing something down, like whether it's in a diary or in other forms, like I'm a songwriter as well. And my songs are essentially like diary entries. I am super vulnerable in my songs because like your main character needs to get that out to heal and write letters to herself. For me, my music is like the only way I know how to process things and heal from things. And so I am sharing those songs with the world, but it's a similar form of writing things down to get things out of your system. Yeah. And it helps. It's something more people should be aware of and try to do is writing as a way of healing. It helps you understand yourself better. It helps you understand the people around you better. And it puts a lot of things into perspective in a way that won't otherwise happen. There's something really beautiful about taking your pain and turning it into art. Exactly. And I love how you said put it into perspective. I always like to look at my songs and anything else I write that's reflective of my life as a mirror and it's reflecting your own experiences and emotions back at you. And a lot of times for me, I can't fully process or understand something emotional or difficult I'm going to unless I have it in some kind of 
tangible form where I can look at it and say, okay, yes, yeah, so this is what I'm going through. This is what I've experienced. This is what I can do to try to move past it. It's really hard, I found, to cope with things and progress when I'm just stuck in my head all the time. When it's in some kind of form of writing, it's so much easier for me to really see the whole truth out there for myself and then process that in the way I have to. Yeah. And that's a really important point to touch on. It's our opportunity to tell the truth, to be completely vulnerable and honest about the things that we've experienced. And there's so much power in that. For sure. And I think what's really awesome about this topic and as writers as well is the fact that we can do these things, whether you're writing poetry or nonfiction or fiction, any kind of form of writing, whether you are expressing your own past trauma through a fictional character, that's still a form of healing just as much so as if if you were writing a creative nonfiction piece that is basically a realistic representation of exactly what you went through. And so I think no matter if you're writing any kind of form of prose or poetry or whatever, there are ways to find healing avenues through that. Sure. I know a lot of um, very successful writers who do use fiction to tell their stories, um, whether it's trying to protect the identities of people that the characters are based off of, or it's really for their own peace of mind. You can make composite characters out of combining different people who may be real and may have sparked and inspired some of these thoughts and ideas and pieces of the plot without actually verbatim just retelling exactly what happened to you in your life. Yeah, exactly. And the interesting thing, too, is I feel like sometimes it can be completely intentional where you know that you're writing about a certain experience or situation and you're specifically putting that through a fictional narrative. But there are also instances where sometimes you may not know. It can be more of a subconscious thing where you don't fully realize what you're doing until later. And this happened to me a couple of times, just looking at my protagonist, because I write YA, um, mystery thriller, and fantasy are my books. And um, the one protagonist deals with a lot of indecision. And I've faced a lot of things in my past where I feel like I made the wrong decision, then suffered the consequences, and I overthink a lot. And she's like that too. Another one of my protagonists, Her whole story is centered around she doesn't feel like she belongs. She's in this magical society. She's the only one that's different and she can't find her place. And she's struggling to find the self-discovery and where she belongs. And so I've definitely had experiences, especially growing up in middle school and high school, where I felt like I was too different. I felt like I didn't fit in and I didn't belong with my peers. And so my character goes through that. And the one that really hit me really hard is my YA speculative thriller. And I was writing this at the tail end of my MFA program and at the time I was in a very toxic situation and that situation actually inspired an entire EP I released called It Is What It Is. But with my writing, this story, it's no way in any way like a reflection of my experiences because it gets super, super dark and it's not what I went through. But just little snippets of things like anxiety and mental health struggles and dealing with very toxic manipulation where, you know, like I started to feel like I was believing things about myself that weren't true and my character was doing the same thing. And then a still point of view, my other protagonist, um, she really struggles with like facing judgment from people because she has this quality about her that really sets her apart and she feels like she's invisible and no one fully understands her and while I was writing this I had no idea that I was putting pieces of myself into this story because I was so sucked into this toxic situation and at the time of recording this I'm in the middle of edits for this and this is the first time I fully revisited it for a very long time and since I'm out of that situation now and I'm like reading it with fresh eyes I'm like oh my gosh, like there are so many things in here that I've indirectly like experienced the same emotions, the same mental health struggles. And it's wild to see that I unintentionally put those things into that story. I think that that's a sign of good writing when you go back and unintentionally lessons you've learned and things you've experienced and parts of yourself make their way into the writing. It's going to make it more relatable. It's going to make it more powerful and it should help not only you, but the other people who read it as well. 
For sure. Yeah, and I think that's a thing, especially with YA fiction. I think there is a very strong way for authors to write these very real stories that teens are experiencing and either you know even older people as well like I read YA I'm 27 and I still read YA and I connect to those characters because they're human universal experiences but I think as authors as long as the experiences are being represented respectfully and authentically there's a lot of power in all fiction but especially like YA and middle grade as well to really capture these raw and sometimes traumatic experiences and allow that the readers to, to connect to those as well and recognize that they're not alone that these characters are going through similar situations and coming out on the other side and it gives hope as well that it's not all lost and there's a way out of the darkness that is so incredibly true and I think that's one of the reasons that the young adult genre um, stands out to me and feels important to me young people are trying to figure out who they are and where they belong in the world and might not necessarily already have the best coping skills to get through difficult times. So reading stories like these um, makes a big difference and, and just makes sense of the world, essentially. Yeah, absolutely, for sure. So a question I have for you is that whenever you are writing a story, especially your memoir, where you are intentionally telling a difficult story, what kind of coping mechanisms did you take on as you're writing that story to help you get through any of the negative emotions that were coming up for you in order to attempt to tell that story without reaching a very dark place where you had to pull back, stop, and not finish the manuscript? So I think that the reason that the writing went so well this time around is because I gave myself the freedom to say, this is too much for me right now in this moment. And I need to take a step back and take a break and then revisit this when I feel that I'm mentally in a healthier place to do so. If you try to sit down and force it all out at once and you can feel yourself sort of spiraling and there's negative thoughts and feelings all around you. Um, you don't have to write it that way. We have the power to pick it up and put it down whenever we feel like it and to do it as is safe and healthy for us. Um, so when I wrote Pieces of Us, for me, it was like a weight being lifted off of my shoulders. This is a story that I was intended to tell. And I was finally psychologically and emotionally in a place that I could do it. But even then, even after all the therapy and all the growth and all the progress, I still had to write it in pieces because it was too much pain to sit through at one time. Yeah, no, thank you so much for sharing that. And I'm deeply resonating to all of that with my songwriting because I've had quite a few songs that I just needed to get out. And because I was still so deep into whatever I was experiencing, there were times where I, I tried to write a song and just like couldn't get through it. Like I would just like break down emotionally. I would spiral and just be trapped in this very dark space. But I knew I had it in me that I had to get it out. But that's separation and writing it when it's the right time and not forcing it. If it's not the right time, that's so important because if you are experiencing difficult emotions and situations, the last thing that we want to do is do things that makes it worse. And even though writing is a fantastic outlet to get things out, it also is important to recognize whenever your creativity and that writing avenue of processing things, if that is contributing to things getting worse, then I definitely agree that, you know, taking a step back and waiting until you are in the best headspace to write that is definitely a good thing because then you will have a clearer mind and you will have been through the worst of whatever you're going through or you have a break period where you feel like you can tell that story in a way that doesn't bring you more harm. Exactly. I do think it is important to not be so re far removed from the feelings and experiences that you're unable to communicate them properly to your audience. So it's really a balancing act. It's a fine line between tapping into that vulnerability and honesty and not taking it too far and spiraling into depression. Yeah, no, very good point. I think the balance is really important for sure. So another point I wanted to talk about is just in general. So we've been talking about specific story elements that we're including that 
allowed us to heal or capture things in our lives. But in general, I think writing itself, whether you're writing a story that has absolutely nothing to do some, with something you've experienced, writing itself really offers an escape from reality and personally brings me such joy to the point where like if I'm going through something and I need a break and I just need to separate myself from these toxic emotions I might be feeling in my personal life, anytime I sit down to write or even read a book, it offers offers such an escape into a fictional world that brings me happiness and joy and that feeling like I'm okay for a period of time. And so I think writing in general can have fantastic healing qualities. Definitely. I, as a child, not only did writing help save me, but so did reading, being able to, to escape into those stories and leave the toxic environment that I was living in and visit somewhere else through reading someone else's writing was vital for me. Um, it, but in every sense of the word, it saved my, my life. I mean, I would not be the person I am today if not for reading and writing as much as I did when I was young. And I've carried that into the person I am now as an adult. Absolutely. And the reading for sure. I think this is why authors they play such an important role and I know sometimes we can get caught up in OMG like is this the best it can be and OMG like will I get an agent with this or will I get a publisher with this and all these very publishing business related things but what we need to remember as well is that our words hold so much power and whether you even if you only get your book into the hands of a single child that could be the one that absolutely needs that story to survive. And so I think recognizing that our authors that we read when we were growing up did this for us, and now we're getting the opportunity to tell stories that could be that companion and that comfort to other kids growing up and just anybody in their life who needs a story. Like we're offering those stories to people, and I think that's a beautiful thing. Definitely a beautiful thing. If you would be kind enough to indulge me, I actually do have a couple of excerpts I'd love to share. Yes, absolutely. I was actually just going to ask you to share those. So look at us thinking alike. (laughs) (laughs) This this is um, an excerpt from Pieces of Us. My mother didn't wrestle with her demons. She invited them to stay and handed them a drink. I remember with great clarity these sort of grief rituals she would have. She would listen to the same song that made her sad on repeat until she broke down crying. Nights in White Satin by the Moody Blues was in heavy rotation, but there were a few other equally melancholy songs that made their way onto the record player as the years passed. To someone else, this might have seemed strange or obsessive. Perhaps it was. But to me, it seemed like a way Emma May could try to process the things that had happened to her. She was sharing authentic emotion and letting herself feel. And this seemed like a victory to me when I was a child. Maybe it did to her too. Like my mother, I sat beside my misery and called it my companion. As a child and as a young adult, I was completely incapable of letting go of the abuse, trauma, and all of the hurt and harm I had endured. I lived in the dark for so long that a bright, happy future seemed nearly impossible a dream intended for other people, less complicated people with better support systems. Even at the age of 18, after I sought therapy and began the healing process, a big part of me clung and still clings to the memories of the abuse I survived. I strangely carried it as some sort of badge of honor that I felt proved how strong I was. I think back to that and feel somewhat foolish. Sure, I did prove how strong and resilient I was, but anyone involved in my childhood should look back at our past and be ashamed, probably horrified. If anything, my childhood should serve as a blueprint of what not to do. I have a very clear memory of my childhood. It always felt important to me that I was able to recall the details of the abuse and neglect that took place in my childhood home. I can only explain it as I had the desire to be my family's historian of horrors. It felt like while my siblings seemed to forget and block out large chunks of our experiences, I stored up all our trauma and memories. It felt like if I could remember it, then it made the abuse real. It somehow made it matter. And I have one uh, short excerpt from my young adult book, Lila's Letters. Lila spent her whole life being looked at as if she was broken. 
She was the re result of her circumstances and her circumstances were dire. Surviving what she had, how could she possibly be whole? Lots of people make that mistake when it comes to girls like Lila. Lila would grow into a woman who warned the world that it should beware of the prey it thinks looks easy. Nature designed that prey to strike when you least expect. Lila was proof positive that you do not have to become the suffering you endure. Lila set out to show the world that she was writing her story and all the abuse, neglect, and trauma did were allow her to show everyone a more complete vision of her strength and spirit. Eventually, something amazing happened. Lila stopped apologizing for being herself. You cannot continue to be called broken if you simply refuse to accept the moniker. And Lila grew tired of other people's negativity and doom and gloom predictions. When she was the one who was hurting, why was everyone else around her so dead set on determining who she was and where she was going? The world is full of people who want to place you in boxes. There is a plan, a script, a pattern, and a path that you are supposed to follow. Go to school, get a job, get married, buy a house, and have kids. It sounded like certain death to Lila. Oh my goodness. Literally, the part about not apologizing for who you are, I think that's one of the biggest things I took away from this because I think sometimes whenever you're going through things, or at least for me, when people start to make you believe like it's all you, it's all in your head, and you're the problem, and there's all this manipulation, and you start to believe it, like you, I found like when I was dealing with that stuff, when I was writing my thriller, I was changing into somebody that like I did not like, and people were making me believe like all these things about myself that I knew were false, but because of the amount of things I was being told about myself, and things being said, to me I started to believe those things and I think you know once you recognize who you are and that you are in this situation that's not good and there's manipulation and things going on once you stop apologizing and you recognize the truth as you see it and you know get out all the fabrication and you stop apologizing and you start being who you are like there's like a weight get, that gets lifted off your shoulders and it's almost like you don't care anymore like you can say all you want but I believe in who I am and I know who I am and you can't change that, but it's very difficult to get to that place. It's very difficult, but it's the most important work you're ever going to do in your life is finding that freedom and being comfortable in your own skin and being willing to tell the hard truths, not just to the rest of the world, but actually just being honest with yourself and truthful with yourself. It's so powerful and it allows you to reclaim parts of yourself that you didn't know you had lost. It allows you to tell your story in a way that will help you to grow and help other people as well. It's a beautiful and wonderful thing and it's worth the hard work you have to do to get there. Yeah. Yeah, no, for sure. I think being honest with yourself is so important because you can't be honest with others unless you're being truthful to yourself. And it's difficult to get to that place, but it's so empowering once you recognize that and you get that out, whether you're writing it down through a fictional character or writing a poem about it, or like me, writing a song about it. Like once you get that out and you see the truth reflected back at you and you believe that, then it's so powerful and it's like you have this barrier around you that nobody can take away your light anymore. Very well said. That's 100% how I feel about both of the books I've written, the poetry that I write, the short stories that I write. It's all in an attempt to free myself from the things that happened to, to me in the past and to give myself a voice and give myself permission to share these difficult stories in a way that is hopefully meaningful and might help somebody. For sure. Absolutely. Well, we've had a fabulous conversation so far. And just to wrap up our chat before the plot twist, I would love for you to share any final thoughts you have on healing through writing. There's something that happens when you write down the difficult and negative things that have happened to you. It makes it real in a way that expressing it otherwise, having a conversation, just thinking about it never can. It can help you heal. It can help you grow. It can help you clear up and make sense of your perspective about life and the people around you. And it can help you identify areas in yourself where you need to grow and do better. Um, there's just so much power. And I would encourage anybody listening to this 
just make the effort, write something and you never even have to show it to another soul. You can write it just for yourself, but do that. Take your power back and use your voice and tell your story because the world needs to hear it. We need you to heal and we want you to find happiness and love and success and all of the beautiful things that you can't access to if you have the weight of your past experiences dragging you down. Perfect. I'm not even going to add anything. That was perfect. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Perfect. Wow. What a fantastic conversation. It has been a joy having you on the show to cover this important topic. And this brings us to the fun plot twist where I get to ask you a question you could have never seen coming. Are you ready? Yes, I'm ready. Perfect. So if you could design a bookmark, how would you design it? So I have a writing group that I started online called The Alchemists. Um, it's a group for inspiration and accountability, and we sort of give each other feedback and bounce ideas off of each other. I do poetry contests and things like that. So I would make a bookmark that has sort of a magical theme to it with maybe some purple and some gold sort of fairy dust looking vibes and uh, have the alchemists, uh, a coven of creatives written on it because that's the name of the group and the tagline that I came up with for it. Fabulous. I love it. And purple and gold. Let's go. <laughs> 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 love it. Love it. Well, perfect. Can you please share with everybody where they can find you online and check out your work? So I, I have a writing Facebook. It is called Pieces of Us. If you search Pieces of Us author on Instagram, I also post there pretty regularly. And the Alchemist writing group that I run is on LinkedIn and also on Facebook as well. Fabulous. Well, thank you so much again for joining me for this inspirational and very important conversation. Thank you so much for having me. It's been great. Yes, for sure. And listeners, that is a wrap on this chapter with Heather called Healing Through Writing. If you enjoyed our conversation, please consider leaving Literary Blonde a review and giving it five stars to help others just like you discover it. Also, if you have friends in the publishing industry you think would enjoy the show, please pass it along to them. Thank you for listening. And until we flip to the next chapter, happy reading and writing.